Hello and welcome back to Car Rental University. I am your host, Alex Woodrow. Today we're gonna to talk about five different insurance scenarios you should be aware of, how uh, you know claims adjusters view these different situations. This is gonna be a very helpful video for insurance questions. Before I get into that, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. That also comes with the Car Share Growth Guide that has um, a city by city breakdown of which car share platform is strongest in your own area. Area. Lots of great information in there. So let's get into this. I get so many questions about insurance. It is the perpetually confusing uh, industry for everyone, especially in the car share space. So let's dive into it. Uh, this is going to be a very helpful video. Uh, I want to talk about five different scenarios uh, in which and how to handle insurance in each of those scenarios. There's going to be some information in here that I think you will find new and relevant in 2024. Uh, my stance on uh, different companies and different platforms that are uh, out there has changed a little, uh, just as I'm learning more about this industry. I have been diving very deep into this space as of late, uh, dealing with my own uh, fleet that I'm building out. And so uh, this is uh, something I wanna kind of uh, impart, uh, you know, impart to you guys. So the first thing you really have to think about and when you talk about insurance, you have to understand what periods zero, period one, period two, and period three are. All insurance is broken down into these four periods and who covers what. So if you are a claims adjuster, you are talking about either period zero, period one, period two, or period three. That an accident happens in one of these four classifications. Now you're probably wondering, well, Alex, what are they? So period zero, is when a car is just sitting, it's in your park parking lot, just hanging out, not going anywhere, right? Period one is when uh, someone's driving the car, probably you, and you are maybe taking it to go get a car wash or you know uh, something along those lines. Uh, we're, you know, it's a repair shop, whatnot. Period two is when the Uber app has been turned on. And but there you are, uh, you know, on your way to go get someone into the car and pick up somebody, but it has, you know, there's nobody in the car yet. And then period three is when you have the Uber app is on and you have a new passenger in the car. So now there are two bodies at least in the car, and this now creates a new liability situation given there are more people in the car. So that is period zero, one, two, and three. So when we think about the breakdown of insurance we have to think about what is which periods are being covered in this scenario. So this is the these are the fundamentals. This is this is car share insurance 101. This is uh, insurance 101 really, uh, especially as it pertains to ride share. So uh, scenario number 1 is when you have a uh, personal when you're using a car for personal use and also car sharing. So this is a probably the most common scenario. Uh, so you know like 80% of Turo's uh, you know, cars are typically used on a personal use basis. And so people have that car, they, they, they you know, somebody's got, let's say an Audi Q4, um, you know, popular car on Turo. So you've got that Audi Q4, you're taking it around, you, you drive that car around on a personal basis for your personal use, but you maybe want to put it on Turo two weekends a month just to, you know, pay off that auto loan, right? So that is, um, in that scenario, people ask, well, what kind of insurance do I need? You just need personal insurance. So Geico, Progressive, Allstate, whatever. Personal insurance for that is fine. When the car goes on to Turo, it's going to go on to Turo's insurance. So in that scenario, you just need, um, you know, you're just, you just need your personal insurance in that. But if there is an accident, if there's a claim, and it's on Turo, you just go through Turo's people. You don't need to call your own insurance people. But if there is an accident while you are driving that car personally, you would call your personal insurance. So in terms of the jurisdiction, there's no Uber driving in this scenario. So we're talking about either period zero or period one. Um, and so we're, you know, period zero obviously is when the car is sitting. If something happens to the car while it's sitting, that goes to your personal insurance. In period one, if you are driving it, then uh, it goes to your personal insurance. And if it's in period one on Turo, then it goes to Turo's insurance. Easy enough, okay? So let's say the car is designed for car sharing only. 
you are not driving this car personally whatsoever. Now, um, you know, we have companies, obviously, American Business Insurance, ABI, we have Lula, we have, uh, you know, a couple other players out there, um, you know, GMI, whatnot. Um, you know, I, I would say at this point, if you are in a scenario where you need to insure the car just for car share, um, and, you know, ABI has what's called period X, right? Period X insurance is basically their version of saying period zero. So they are covering this car when it's just sitting on in the lot. But as soon as a Turo driver or a get around driver or a hire car driver gets in that car, it goes over to their insurance. So um, I, I will say just in this scenario, be careful about this insurance policy. Um, there's a lot of exclusions. There's a lot of, you know, things that get denied. Just be careful on this stuff. Um, it doesn't always cover everything. So just read the fine print, print, fine print closely. Uh, also, cautionary tale, I would be careful with Lula right now. Um, I, I just really would be careful with Lula. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna say too much about that, but I'm not loving how that company is trending right now. Um, so that is what is called period X or period zero insurance. Uh, and that is designed just for a car that is 100% designed for car sharing. Obviously with, um, you know, the Lula ORP plan and the period X plan, you, they do give you like 250 to 300 miles a month where you can drive that car for, you know, to the car wash, the shop, whatever, you know, that, that's included. Okay. So that technically is a, that's period zero period X with a little bit of period one in there. So let's talk about long-term private rentals. Now, long-term private rentals, when I say long-term private rentals, I'm talking about Uber drivers who are, you're giving a car to an Uber driver, they drive it for a month, two months, three months, four months, or more. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Now we're talking about periods zero through three, right? Uh, we're talking about all periods are in play here. Now, if the app is on at any time, if, if the Uber app is on or the Lyft app is on and the car gets crashed, Uber and Lyft will handle that claim in the payout. Um, there are some things that, that it doesn't cover everything. Obviously, you gotta read into that, but for the most part, you know, it will cover you uh, in the scenario of that. Now, how do you cover this? I'll say this, um, and I've been digging into this quite a bit, a lot. So the short answer is you need livery insurance, L-I-V-E-R-Y. Don't call it livery. If you say livery, that means you don't know what you're talking about. It's livery, livery insurance. You need livery insurance for this car. If you have, I would say under five cars, livery insurance is going to be stupidly expensive. And like, I mean like five, six, $700 a month. It's gonna be stupidly expensive and probably not make sense, okay? Bit like agencies typically try to price themselves in a way where they don't want to have to deal with anyone who has under five cars. So what I would recommend, if you are under five cars and you want to do a, um, you know, a private rental agreement, if the car is listed under your personal name, just put that, get a driver, tell them you got to commit to this for six months to a year, whatever, and just put them on your personal uh, insurance plan and have them under the ride share option. Always be upfront with the insurance company. Um, you know, I, I would talk to Progressive, maybe Allstate, maybe State Farm. I would start with those three. So in that scenario, um, you can probably do that with two, three, four drivers in that scenario. If you are doing five or more, I would just really recommend finding an insurance broker to quote you out a more bulk level rate. And that, in that scenario, frankly, especially when you get up to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 cars, in that, you know, when you get up to like 30 or 40 cars in that range, uh, you're gonna get a much, much better deal on livery. It's gonna, that price is gonna come down to like around 200 bucks a month, way better. Um, and so that is what I would say is the, the way to handle it. Private rental agreements, frankly, it makes a lot more sense if you do this in bulk, in mass. Um, so just from a cost standpoint, it, it, it's just way, way be easier. So, but I, I understand that in this industry that it's very hard to pull together that kind of money to get that many cars. Mm -hmm. There are creative leasing options, et cetera. That's a different conversation for a different day, but you know, that's kind of the situation um, with private rental agreements. However, if you have a small amount of cars under five and you want to put them just, I would just put them on the personal insurance 
um, on your plan. Um, you know, people ask me a lot, is this gonna screw things up? What if they get in a crash? It, it, it's not gonna be, it's not that bad. It's happened to me a couple times. I survived, it wasn't a big deal, whatever, okay. Uh, Short-term private rentals. Um, so this is when you are doing private rentals, but the car people are renting the cars in more of a Turo style type you know, situation, taking the car for a few days. I would recommend GMI insurance in this use case. I've always heard that they're very good in uh, a you know short-term private rental type scenario. Uh, ABI could probably get you a quote on something as well in this use case. So that's where I would go for short-term private rentals. And then lastly, you know, obviously um, with Uber drivers and and with Uber drivers and when they are in a an accident. Um, if that app is on, just to reiterate, period two, period three, Uber is going to cover that. So that is, you know, typically they handle. So when anytime there's an accident, the claims adjuster always has access to Uber's system that will tell you if the accident was on or not at the time of the accident, or if the app was on at the time of the accident. So uh, they have access to this information. That's how they find out who, you know, who, which company fulfills the claim. So that is a, a pretty uh, a intense and fast breakdown of insurance. Um, that should give you a good primer. Um, I hope that's helpful. I know you're gonna have questions. This is, this is an ever-changing topic, but that, that should give you a solid primer on how insurance works, especially in the rental and car sharing industry. Uh, drop some questions, happy to answer them. Uh, before I go, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. And I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you.